Hey there, and welcome to the Horrible Movie Podcast. This week, we have Russell Ellis. Uh, He is a fine friend of mine, uh, also an all-American track superstar, and an all-around good dude. So, he is talking about Pure Country, the George Strait classic from the early 90s. We have a great conversation about country music and about George Strait. And, of course, about pure country. Before we get going on that, a little housekeeping. Hey, listen to Disney Plus Reviews uh, on the Studio DNA Network. And also listen to all of the shows on the Studio DNA Network. Sith Pop and all the other great ones on there. Uh, What else? Is there another great one uh, as the train goes by? Um, Also, new album out from uh, my friends in The Broken Binding. Uh, If you like... Maybe country music, maybe uh, bluegrass, maybe folk music. I think you're going to love The Broken Binding. Uh, Producer Phil is uh, in the band on the new album. It's pretty darn good. And obviously James Green, uh, who is the brain brain child. But he's not a child, folks. He's a man. And he's written some awesome songs. So anyway, The Broken Binding, Through the Night is the album. Check it out everywhere you get your music. So without further ado, speaking of music, it's time for some country music with Pure Country. I cross my heart and promise to. Here he is, Russell Ellis, and we talk about Pure Country. Bye. Well, Mr. Ellis, welcome to the Horror Movie Podcast. How are you? Oh, glad to be here. Thanks for calling. Oh, I'm just here to talk to you today about Pure Country. Uh, what do you what do you what do you think about Pure Country? Is it your favorite movie ever? I don't know that I would call it my favorite movie ever. Um, I'm gonna say top 100, maybe movies that I've seen. What about George Strait? Where does he rank on your favorite country people of all time? <laughs> oh man, George Strait, one of the best uh, country music artists out there. He has. Um, uh, just really turn the page. I felt like for country music. Yeah, I mean, he modern country is still uh, basically. It sounds a lot like uh, George Strait country. So, and he's you know he sounded a lot like older country. He's kind of a gap to new things. Kind of right. Gar- I feel like he, kind of how Garth. Yeah, is. yeah Garth, Alan Jackson. Uh, yeah. You know, they they went from that red dirt kind of yeah. hillbilly country yeah. to you know a new modern type of country now it's not the uh some of the stuff that they call country music now which i don't think it is but uh you know your guys like i think chris stapleton are trying to hold on to that yeah. maybe a sound but anyway i think the george i think the georges linked together george jones and george Strait, mm. and then you move into uh more modern things so um sure let's do this real quick uh, okay. Did you know that this album, the Pure Country album, now uh-huh. the movie itself, the budget for it was ten million dollars. Okay. The, which is a low budget, by the way. That's a very, very low budget movie. I mean, this is like a Hallmark movie budget for this movie. Yeah, uh, I could, I could, I could tell you that. But go on. Yeah. The box ahead. office, the box office was fifteen million, so it did make money. In Hollywood terms, that's not much money. Right. I but can't the, believe it. I can't believe it made money. Really? The, it was a big deal. When it first came out, I remember, I think I was in seventh or I think I was in seventh grade when it came out and it was a big deal. Like it was a, it was a big deal that George Strait was in a movie. Now he's not a very good actor, but they, they limited the things he did, I think in it too. Um, sure. did, did you know that this album, the pure country soundtrack is his number one selling album? Would you oh, ever I could believe. 
I could yeah. believe that. There's a lot of great songs on that uh, in the movie. I mean, I, 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 I 100% believe that. I, hey, I would venture to say that he made a lot more money off the album than he did his movie. Yeah, this thing is a uh, real, was a real gold mine for him. Um, it uh, sold over six million copies. Wow! Uh, it's most and here's uh, the song uh, Heartland. Remember that one? Yeah, sing a song about a heartland. And you sing a song about my life. Uh, I crossed my heart was a big one on there too. Uh, where the sidewalk ends. Uh, that was probably the big one that they're I remember. All, they're all big. They're all big. And then he had one more. King of uh, Broken Hearts. King of Broken Hearts. Or in mm-hmm. some people's minds, after a bad Mexican meal, King of Broken Farts. Um, Perfect. Love it. Horrible. Um, but uh, let's talk about this movie. So what's the stupidest thing about this movie when you think about it? Let's start so, with that. Okay. So one of the key most... Uh, I like the idea. I get what they're trying to do. And I am, listen, I am not a movie critic at all. I, I just enjoy watching different types of movies. It doesn't matter. Yeah, me too. Uh, you know, but probably the, the, the idea of him going back home and going back to his roots, I think that's good. But the absolute, I think it's this worst part of the whole movie. <laughs> so Dusty, played by George, yes. uh, is, you know, uh, in the movie, he's got a facial beard, he's got a ponytail. So weird. he goes back home, and the first thing he does when he gets off the, I believe it's eighteen wheeler truck, he looks <laughs> across the street, and there happens to be old barber shop. <laughs> and so he goes in there, and then literally all they do is cut the ponytail off, <laughs> like, and every, he's like, "That's it. That's the look. <laughs> That's the look." Um, that was probably the cheesiest part, <laughs> and maybe the other scene that I'm thinking of is probably one of the worst ones uh, is where the, the, the leading female actor, I don't know her name. Her, the, uh, the, comes, the, the, you're talking about the, his girlfriend or the yeah, manager? He's not as, not his ex-wife or manager or whatever she is. Yeah. Uh, but her Har- girl, Harley comes, Tucker is her, is the, is the Harley char- Tucker. Yeah. The character's Har- name is Harley. Tucker. Yes. So Harley comes back home from whatever and they're out there playing the king of broken hearts oh gosh on uh with uh i'm guessing some sort of bucket and his drummer had found him back home yeah um (laughs) and they're they're out there playing uh king of broken hearts but anyway that's 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 probably the two worst parts of the whole movie so his drummer is an actor by the name of john doe that's the actual actor's name like his real name is John Duchak, but his his acting professional name is John Doe, but okay. he is one of the co-founders of this punk band called X. Like he's really plays drums. Like he's a really good. Like he's a good musician. Like it's really wow. really interesting. Yeah. Anyway, but he's been in a lot of stuff. That guy actually, he's one of those actors that has been in a ton of things. But he also sure. has a music career that that, and so he probably is sneakily like a, a multi millionaire because he's been. Yes. If you look at his acting credits. That guy's been in a ton of stuff. Uh, yeah, he's else? well off. The other guy that makes his this is only this guy's second movie uh, is the guy the, the guy that plays the actor the uh, character Buddy Jackson who plays a very pivotal role in this Kyle hey. Chandler. Now you hey, like clear, clear eyes, full hearts can't lose. Can't lose. Now you like the Friday Night Lights the TV show. Love it. The, Absolutely love it. Yeah, it's really good. Did you watch the movie? Yes, of course I have. I like the movie a lot. I think I like the movie yes. Friday Night Lights a lot better. Have you read the book? I have the book if you want to borrow it. I have never actually read the book. It is I a should. Gem. I, I enjoy reading. It's a gem. Like it's really, really good. So um it's darn good. Ernest Tucker is the dad of Harley Tucker. He's the old cowboy, all leathery and yep. looks like he ate a pack of cigarettes that morning. He uh, did. This, He's hey, he is the Winston man. He is Ern- the camel man. Ernest Tucker, and this was his very last movie. Did you know that? Wow, I did not know that. Uh, and this, that's bad. I was about to say something horrible. I'm not gonna. Yeah, All don't. Right. Yeah, don't. Yeah, not don't. gonna. Not gonna do that. Um, when was the first time you saw this movie? What do you remember? Oh man, man, I was young. I remember. Long I TV remember watching. No, it was on VHS. Ooh. I think it's yeah. Uh, my stepdad. Um, probably like you. I think I was probably, let's see, 
uh, probably 14 years old, maybe mm-hmm. 13, 14 years old. And he got it and we watched it several times. Um, I mean, I haven't watched that movie probably in 20 years. I'm 30. Yeah. Yeah. But I you mean, remember, but you remember it very, I'm the same I, way where sure, it's sure. very I, visual I, and you remember it. Yes. I, I, uh, we watched it a lot of times. Let me say that. Um, I, I, I can the remember the movie. Helps. I can remember the, you know, a lot of different parts. Um, uh, and I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's stuck in my head. Um, I think that the best part, like the opening thing where it's the crowd's chanting dusty, uh, they come out and where the sidewalk in kicks in and mm-hmm. he just stops singing and he looks around and he's like, this isn't why I got into music. I got into music to be poor and to play in coffee shops uh, for no money. This is why, that's why I got into it. The real meaning of music. And I was cracked up at that, thinking, "Dude, you you've had it too good. You've won for too long. This is like the, this is like the uh, Tom Brady of country music. He just sure he's regretting I, winning, I guess. Now. Yeah, and he and he finds solace going back to the bar he used to play in when he was younger, and and looking at a picture, li- looking at a picture of himself. And Earl, getting, his brother, is the drummer. John Doe. getting get, getting drunk. That that's my <laughs> that's <laughs> he he, he longs for. Days. He he longs he longs for playing in front of uh, a motley crew and not making millions. I guess th- I always find that really really funny because he's just like it's all about the laser lights and the smoke, <laughs> and I just I just wanted to suffer with my guitar on stage. I think it's like hey, a really he, funny. He ain't no dancing chicken. No, I ain't no dancing. You know the white thing on top of the uh, cat. You can wear a white cowboy hat. But that doesn't mean that it's not still, you know, pe- you know, poop still got a piece of white on it too from a chicken. Like, that's what the old guy says. It's like sage wisdom <laughs> from Moses. Yeah. The, what? <laughs> yeah, it's like good Lord, Methuselah, relax. <laughs> um, but no, uh, buddy, buddy confronts Lula, the manager. Lula is the snidely. Now they're all good friends. Lula and Earl, the drummer, and Dusty are all good friends. Yeah, and they're the original be- three. She, yeah, she's become the manager, and so. She, she makes this deal whenever Dusty runs off. Uh, she makes this deal with uh, God, Buddy, who's on the stagehand group. And uh, Buddy's played, you know, plays, you know, Buddy Jackson. He's played by Kyle Chandler, a big time movie star. He, uh, he, I, one of my favorite things is he, he does this expose interview. He's like, that's me right there. I'm Dusty. I'm the, I'm fake Dusty. And I always cracked up at him being fake Dusty and Did, uh, tattling on himself. Wasn't there? Yeah, he did do that. Wasn't there a scene in that movie, and it's like they're at the rodeo, and yes, and Buddy has written Buddy has written a song. Yeah, it has written one of the songs, and he like cuts him off. He's like, no, 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 that's not how you sing it. Yeah, and that's how- one of, yes, and and so he already has a little bit of uh, doesn't like Dusty, uh, somewhat, and so this mm-hmm. fuels that. The breakup scene at the end, whenever they, uh, I think it's funny whenever Harley, the the girlfriend, new girlfriend, Lula comes to town to try to get Dusty back because Dusty's her cash cow. Like Dusty's how she makes all her money. And yeah. she lies to Harley and says, well, you shouldn't be messing around with my husband. And then Harley's all upset because she's just a lonesome farm girl from uh, Pearl River, Texas or wherever she's from. Uh, right. and, and they, uh, so that makes Dusty mad. He comes back. He has his big, uh, he's like, I'm going to do it my way, which isn't at a bar. It's in some theater where everyone's <clears throat> seated in tuxedos. It's like, it's like the, it's, the country it's in Las, it was, or something. It was, Las Ve- it was in Las Vegas. Have you seen Christmas, uh, one of the vacations uh-huh. uh, where it's Vegas vacation? Yeah. Where they go and listen. To, uh, oh, they go to. I can't remember the popular guy in Vegas. Oh, uh, Wayne it's, Newton. Wayne Newton. I think that's in the same place in Vegas. Well, like Wayne Newton. That's where they were at in, in pure it country. Looks like it. In, yeah. Yeah. But anyway, well, yeah. he comes out and what's he saying? He, he wrote a song for, what was the song he wrote for the winter back? Uh, cross my heart oh. and promise. Oh. You. <laughs> hey, listen, I, I'm pretty sure. Hey, wait a minute. I remember yeah. that specifically. I was in sixth grade the first time I saw that movie, and here's why I remember that. Oh, God. So, um, sixth grade, Russell Ellis had a crush uh-huh. on a young girl yeah. and on a cassette tape, uh-huh. moved it 
to where I crossed my heart and promised to and played it for a girl. Oh, uh, man. Take this home, listen to it. It's real. Did mm-hmm. it work? Uh, no, she ended up uh, dating my uh, best friend at the time. Then she, you handed her a note that said check yes or no on it. The <laughs> next, the next day was a check yes or no note. Uh, no, I don't think that was on the Pure Country album. But no. anyway, well, I'm saying if you're using George Strait to get girls was to a, go out, it with was you. a it was a great cassette tape. George let me down. She actually wanted to date George Strait, not. Russell I think that's Wells. your country. Can we write a country song called George Let Me Down? <laughs> I'm sure we could. That would be really good, actually. Which I yeah. to do. Um, actually, I guess I'm gonna write that down. Actually, I'm gonna make. Yeah, you should um, take note. There you go. I'll give you credit. Um, I slow dance with a girl to a girl. Uh, to I crossed my heart at my eighth grade formal. So good times in Mountain View, Missouri. That's terrific. That's yeah, it was, terrific. It was terrific. What did we say that was called? George, let me down. Let me down. George, right. let me down. George, let me down. That's my country song. Mm-hmm. Anyway, all right, just writing that down so everyone You're knows welcome. that it's well, it's here now, and now we get credit for it. So um, that's exactly right. So when you're making trillions of dollars like George Strait, um, yes, I have. You, a, I, you don't have that. you you get all the credit, but just know I wrote the song. Like, isn't that his mantra? Anyway, oh go gosh, on. I did this. I'm the real Dusty. Uh, currently, it's a 41 percent on Rotten Tomatoes, and I don't think that's going to change. Uh, and then it's got, but it's got a 91% audience approval on Rotten Tomatoes. So the critics didn't necessarily think much of Dusty's acting, which is acting is it's George Strait acting. It's not like sure. you're, you, if you want a good actor, you don't get George Strait, but he has star power. Uh, but the fans like the movie. I, I agree. I've saw it a hundred times on TBS over the years when they play movies. Mm-hmm. Uh, we rented it from the R and R video there in Mountain View, and that's how we uh, first watched the movie. Um, what else did you own this soundtrack? Yes, I had it on. Uh, yeah, that's I had it on tape, man. Man, I, I had it on tape. I used to play it, uh, listen to it when I was feeling good. Uh, yeah. Listening to where the sidewalk ends. When I was yeah. sad, I listened to the Cross King of heart. Broken Hearts. King and, of Broken uh, Hearts. Cross my heart. Um, um, yeah, it was. It listen. The movie was oh, I, like I said, I I'm not a don't watch this movie is the worst movie of all time. No, that's not. I uh, I it has a good had a good meaning, you know. Don't don't leave your roots, you know. Don't forget about your roots. Yes. From cut off your ponytail. Listen, fans, cut off your ponytail. Everything yeah, if you works want, out better when you <laughs> cut your ponytail off. The key to success is putting the limelight on yourself with your ponytail off. Yes. Playing guitar with no, don't show anybody in your band. It's just you by yourself. You, so, you, you. I like that. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, did you know that I starred in this movie and I was actually the real Dusty? What? You well, what? for a while. For one show, I was the real Dusty. Oh, really? Uh, and there's some, here's some uh, recorded, uh, here's actually the audio from that, uh, from that show. Live in Fort Worth. It's at the Cow Palace there in Fort Worth. I don't know if you've heard this song before. Can you hear that audio? Absolutely. Okay, well, let me. Here, here's, it's going to start real quick. This is me on stage. Yeah, I was about to say, here, here it comes. Well, when your hair clean fiddle, then feel guitar. Thank you. <laughs> You're listening to the sound of the American heart. Oh, there she is. And I scream music don't matter day and night. Bring a smile to your face and a tear to your eyes. Everybody say, Yeah. Yeah. Sing the song. Land. The only place I I feel feel at home. Wave, good man. Works until the daylight's gone. Summer summer night. night. Where you do no wrong from right. Sing a song about, about the heartland. Sing a song, song about my wife. Hey. Oh. Anyway, that's just a little snippet from the show. There yeah, you go. Time. Hey, you're welcome. If anybody tries to sign me, you can reach me at. No. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> On your AOL. Here's your Russell Ellis at AOL.com email. Here. Yeah, exactly. Um, um, what else you got? Yeah. Anything else? You know, no, I mean, do you know that no, Garth I've, Brooks? Did you ever hear, see the Garth Brooks Chris Gaines crap? Did you ever see that? I watched. Uh, I'm trying to remember. Yes, I have. I watched it. Um, 
me, my, actually, my wife and I watched that, where kind of like the transformation of Garth Brooks, where he came from. We actually watched another special on George Strait, on kind of where he came from, and and that kind. And I'm trying to remember where we watched that on. I don't know if it was like I think it was on Netflix or something. I don't remember. Um, but we watched something here within the last a year or two, maybe on guys. Um, but it was interesting. Garth did the Chris Gaines thing, and I almost feel like it was like, and it wasn't him trying to copy because Garth is his own person. Like Garth could do anything he wants the rest of his life, and it doesn't even matter. Oh, but I almost best, felt like he was hey, like best showman. He's got a great he showmanship. Is, yeah, but then that Chris Gaines stuff where it was going to be a movie. And it was going to be a. It has an album. There's an album, a Chris Gaines album, where he is Chris Gaines with a wig on and a stupid looking chin goatee thing. Yeah, I've and then it. it didn't work out, and it's just like it, it ended up coming off weird. And I feel like Pure Country could have come off weird too, but George Strait stuck to just being basically a parody of himself. Like he was, he was George Strait playing a character very much like George Strait. Can I can I can I can I be can I interject here? Of course. I feel like had George Drake come out with a ponytail and that scraggly beard and posed as Dusty, yeah. kind of like and like you know what I made that public kind of like Garth did with yeah. Chris kind of I think it would have been weird. I think it would have been everybody have been like what is happening? I bet his I would say that George Strait's residuals off of what, what he made, again, off TBS, off USA. I think all those networks picked this movie up and played it several times. Oh, sure. I think he made a lot of money off this movie in the long run anyway. And they probably had to talk him into it. Like, a guy that's the, a country music guy is not going, I want to act, too. Especially a guy like George Strait. He's just like, how much are you going to pay me? And they're like, $10 million. Okay. Right, right. Hey, okay. I, think he need, I think he needs some money. Uh Dude, dude doesn't make much money. Uh, uh, as he, it is. he sold like a, I saw where he sold. He has this ranch in San Antonio where it sold for like a billion dollars or something like that. Gosh. So it's pretty crazy. Um, but I don't know. Anyway, that's the story, pal. I digress. I digress. Anyway, um, well, Pure thanks country. for coming on. Pure yeah. country. Um, uh, I will I'm sure at some point watch it again. I don't know if I can convince my son to watch this, uh, but uh, you could imagine. Um, that I'm sure he'd like to watch it. I mean, sure he'd be like, "This is okay. It's not too bad." I, yeah, and it's not in, too bad. In a Yellowstone, it's... in a Yellowstone world, cowboy is cool again. Yes. So maybe George Strait. I'm does. able to convince. I've been able to convince my kids uh, to watch some some of the better jo- uh, John Wayne. Uh, uh, they're movies. gonna say Yellowstone. I was like, "Geez, dude." No, we don't want. No, we, <laughs> we can't. We, no, my kids can't watch Yellowstone. Beth Dutton, yikes. No, we, we, we don't watch that. But I, I can uh, convince them to watch. Um, I'm sure my stepdad has a, uh, the VHS copy somewhere of Pure Country. I'd have to go now, home now, and look for it. Now to find a, VAC, a VCR to play it. Exactly, right? <laughs> Impossible. Impossible. All right, well, Mr. Ellis, thanks for coming on. Hey, very much a pleasure, Mr. Ultimate. And uh, hopefully I don't uh, give you bad reviews or drop oh, no, your uh, listening is- crew. No, that's the beauty of this show. It's all about, it's pretty stupid, so don't worry about it. No one cares. It's all good. All right. Uh, we're very popular in uh, Nova Scotia. We're very popular uh, in uh, Wentworth. We're, we're extremely popular um, around uh, in the West Coast, but we're also popular, um, you know, in Brazil. So we've got a Perfect. big following, you yeah. know, all the people around, and we we love our country music around here, so don't. Tell me otherwise. We'll spit. Yeah, I will pe- spit some beech nut in your eye. Hey, people! People do say that you're kind of a big deal. I mean, I'm, so. I'm a pretty big deal. I mean, honestly, like if you really were to think about it, I mean, I'm not as big as some people, but I'm bigger than other people. I mean, so I'm a big deal. Yeah, I mean, I I'm talking so. about size only. I mean, my gut. Oh, there well, are fatter would... people than me, but there are also well. skinnier people than me. I'm I'm kind of like a mama bear in the middle. Do you know what you know what Dusty would say? Would what you? would he say? glare at you uh-huh. and say, get the hell out of here. Get out of here, buddy. We don't need you. You're, you think you're going to tell us what to do? I'm dusty. Oh, oh gosh. Okay. And he just leaves. Yeah. What? Yeah. And never to be heard from again. So dumb. Well, until he started coaching football. He did. Changed his name. Then he ran into Mike Leach. Um. Anyway. God. All Sorry. Right. Hey, thanks for coming on. 
No, I appreciate it. Seriously, thank you for calling, and I uh, uh, hope you enjoy your Friday afternoon. I'm excited. Well, this could be listened to in 100 years, and it'll be a Tuesday when they listen to it. But you can imagine, if they listen to it on a Friday, then they'll love it. Yeah. They got that hope Friday so. feeling. There you go. All right. See you, buddy. Uh, hey, all you right. know what? I'll see you where the sidewalk ends, all right? All right. When the road begins, you got oh. it. We'll talk to you. See you. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you.